Hi again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two for this very, very special series uh, that we've been doing videos on Medicare and health insurance, even uh, getting a, a little bit far afield into long-term care issues beyond uh, uh, insurance. But this has been very, very helpful, very um, unique, I think, uh, particularly for uh, our audience. And Art, uh, we we are winding down. We're very close to uh, wrapping this up. What What's next? Well, the next episode, and uh, I'm... Uh... Uh, I'm not going to call it the final episode, but in this series, we've been talking about all things related with uh, uh, Medicare. So one of the things that, uh, and I know that Aaron uh, has a really uh, uh, good feel for it, uh, although like everybody else will be guessing, is uh, the future of Medicare as we know it, or Medicare at all. So uh, uh, Aaron uh, uh, Zolbrod, uh, is with us again to talk about his thoughts about what the future of Medicare might look like. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Hi guys. I'm glad to be doing another episode. And um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the future of Medicare is murky at best. Uh, murky. Oh, sorry that, to hear that. Well, murky yeah, is actually is, kind of upbeat uh, as yeah. opposed to what some people say. Well, I'm going to maybe make it a little bit more dire than that here in a second. And Social Security is as well, guys. Um, you know, it, it's all over the news. Um, you know, I, I'm just doing a little bit of research and I, of what I kind of already knew and have read. But uh, Medicare Part A has got a trust fund, and, and we are five years away from insolvency. And when I say insolvency, I mean broke, not a dollar in it. If something is not done in five years, there will be not one dime in the Medicare Part A uh, trust fund. And that's fact, and that's being reported by hundreds of, of organizations. Um, and so, you know, the bottom line with a lot of what we're gonna talk about is either taxes are gonna go, need to go up, um, benefits reduced, uh, a reduction in reimbursement to hospitals, or, or all of the above are gonna need to happen. Part B and D, so A is the hospital portion, right? B is our medical, which is our outpatient for services. D is our prescription drug coverage for people on Medicare. Now, B and D don't have a trust. B and D are paid for by general taxpayer funds, um, by the general funds or budget or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so we talked about medical inflation, right, in the last episode. Yeah. And as medical inflation continues to, continues to rise, and more and more people are going on Medicare. Um, I think they said, oh gosh, we're gonna have 80 million by 2030, 80 sure. million Americans. Right now yeah. there's 60. And just in another seven years, there's gonna be another 20 million. So again, you're gonna have to increase taxes, raise Part B premiums, reduce benefits, um, you know, which is going to eventually again, it's 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 Payroll taxes are what funds Medicare B and D. Payroll taxes, so we're going to put more burden on the working class of America. Yeah, um, which who's already being burdened enough as it is. So, you know, it's it's not good, guys. Well, I'm let's, going to be let's, perfectly let's honest. Let's face with you. it. Not good. Let Let's face it. The uh, the payroll taxes. Um, it's the it's the people between whatever it is eighteen and 55 who are paying for those of us over 65, uh, paying for our Medicare over 65. So Social Security and Social Security, it's a Ponzi scheme. Oh, exactly. Social Security, Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. You're yeah. taking money from people, their Social Security taxes are paying the Social Security for people already retired yeah. because our government was so responsible that they spent it they spent the treasure chest. Right. And, 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 and the problem is now people aren't being born at the rate. We're going to have more people that need Social Security than are entering the workforce. Right. So it's like it's like a double it's like a double whammy. The, the, um, the largest the largest demographic of baby boomers, baby boomers, as we speak today, are approximately the youngest is approximately 55 years old. And the oldest is approximately 75 years old. 
that group is going to move up to be 60, you know, uh, 65, 65 75, and 85, and 95. They're still going to be alive because we're we're living longer and longer. And those youngsters, our our children, and our grandchildren are going to be paying for us, and they'll go broke. They can't afford it. So, so, so I, I, I said this 10, 12 years ago that I was planning my retirement not having Social Security, and I think everybody, I think people, you know, under 50 better start thinking that way too. Um, you know, the problem that we have is number one, DC can't stop spending money. Um, they don't know how to find areas that are they're they're wasting taxes and eliminate those. Um, and and you know, you can't. You can't run an election. You can't run an election on cutting these programs, right? Because it's a losing proposition. You cannot run an election and say, "I'm going to cut your Social Security. I'm right. going to make Medicare. You're not going to get Medicare until you're 68. You're not going to get Social Security now until you're 65 instead of 62." Um, you know, that's why I don't think anything's going to happen until we fall off the cliff. And I think one day we're going to wake up. And it's going to be, well, sorry, folks, your Social Security, if we don't plan on this, what's going to happen is you're going to wake up one day and your Social Security is going to be 70% of what it is, what it was yesterday. And yeah. your Medicare premiums are going to double. And, you know, your hospital, you know, deductible is going to go up, which means your supplement's going to go up or your Advantage plan is going to go up. And, you know, it's something that needs to be planned for, but isn't going to be. Because, you know, you're already seeing those commercials, right, that that whoever says that they we need to do something about Medicare and Social Security, they're running the commercials that, oh, you know, John from John Smith from, you know, Democrat from Wyoming or Republican from, you know, Maryland is is wanting to throw granny off the cliff. Um, and, you know, that it, it, it's 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 a problem. And, and I, you know, we govern again. I mentioned this before. We govern. We only govern now. We only make policy in, in during crisis. We never yeah. make policy um, when, when things are just kind of sailing along. And, and, and because people need to run for elections and win elections. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I'm hoping, Aaron, that uh, at least some of our politicians uh, find the courage to talk about it and maybe put something on the table that some commission or some somebody where nobody can get the blame is what it takes can can solve I, it's gonna happen. Well, guys, it's guys, gonna happen. Wait, hold on guys i have a practical yeah. we don't like to talk politics here i have a practical solution practical solution okay. is you take all of the all and all you have to do is take the senators and people in the house of representatives and roll back their benefits to a, a social security benefits so that they don't get the enormous salaries forever after having served one or two terms, and that'll pay for everybody else. No, I'm just I'm kidding. But but there will be they'll have to do things. They'll have to uh, slowly but surely. Somebody will have to have the courage to increase the retirement age by a month a year or a month every six months over a long period of time, so that people won't retire because we're living to eighty and ninety, not till sixty four. That people won't be able to retire until they're seventy. They'll have, they'll have well, to do things like that. Okay, we but know it can be done. Right. We know it can be done. It's a matter of will, political the will, courage to attack it. Right. You know, I think if it's going to happen, it's going to happen after this election, right? You hope, you hope it happens after the twenty twenty four election because you have four years until, or at least two years until, you know, the next major, you know, midterm, or right. four years to the next presidential. We'll run. see. But. It, it, yeah, I, I'm not confident, guys. I'll be honest with you. And there's another reason why I'm not confident is because, you know, one way that we can solve some of this problem is to come, you know, is to get big pharma and big and big health insurance in line. The problem is they have huge lobbies, some of the biggest lobbies um, that there are. It takes tens of millions, you know, hundreds of millions, even a billion dollars to run for president. It takes, you know, I forget how much Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke, I forget what that was, like almost 100 bit. I, I, it was just insane what they spent on an election. And, you know, these guys take the money because it takes that much money to run for uh, 
office. And, and I, I'm afraid until we have campaign finance and lobbying reform, I don't know that it ever gets done because nobody can get these guys in line and say, you know, a huge part of big pharma is funded by the American taxpayer, huge yeah. part of their profits. Yeah. And that, that nobody will go after them and say, we're done. You're not going to get a thousand dollars a month for a Zempic anymore. You know, you're charging, it's 300 bucks in Canada and France and Mexico and everywhere else. Why are we paying a thousand? Why? Yeah. And, you know, and, and you're seeing these commercials on TV that are run by the insurance lobby now that are accusing them. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what party I, I'm just stating fact that, that they're running commercials accusing this administration of trying to cut Medicare Advantage. Right. All because what's happened is Medicare, CMS, Center for Medicare and Medicaid, caught insurance companies cheating. They caught them misdiagnosing purposely, overdiagnosing or diagnosing people with more serious conditions, because when they do that, they get they get more reimbursement. And part of the problem is these companies insurance companies are buying hospitals, one in particular that we mentioned earlier, but I'm not going to mention their name, but they're going out buying every doctor, every, every group of doctors, every hospital they can. And then they're going in and telling their doctors who are now their employees, you go back and you, you, you make the diagnosis more severe so we yeah. can get, we can get reimbursed and they got caught. And now Medicare has saying, you know what? No, we're not going to let this happen. We're going to start the auditing process. It's going to be better. And, and this is the basis for them running commercials, trying to say that, you know, the current administration is trying to kill Medicare Advantage. And it's just, no, we're trying to get you, they're, they're trying to keep you guys from being, you know, greedy, shady, and, and, and you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's out of control and, and, and it's got to stop. But again, they have such a grip on politicians that w will, will they ever, like you said, we talked about having the guts to, to do it. Phew. Well, I don't know. I think you at, know, this, at this point, uh, you're right. I think the title of this episode is going to be The uh, Future of Medicare is Murky. And uh, quite frankly, if John and I have the guts, maybe we'll try to figure out another series on uh, can we really, because obviously they're not doing it in Washington, D.C. Maybe you and I can go uh, bring in some experts on both sides and uh, figure out uh, is there a future for this? Of course, that'll take us a little far afield of what we're doing. But, you know, maybe those are the viral videos we need, John. So in any event, at this point, what I'd like to do is just absolutely thank Aaron for an amazing uh, review of all of the things, all, a huge amount of stuff uh, surrounding uh, Medicare and senior care and, and costs and how to uh, better spend your money for medical care. And, and health, um, health insurance in general. Yes. So thank you, Aaron, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you thank again you uh, periodically. Uh, now, absolutely. Okay, John. Before we go, Art, I, I want everybody to uh, hear how to get in touch with Aaron sure. and his business. Uh, Aaron, give and us you, your you, contact. You know what's funny is I don't even know if we ever mentioned, or maybe I did once, that the name of the company is the health insurance store. <laughs> I don't know that we ever, we got through <laughs> 10 of these episodes. I don't know if we ever mentioned it. Here it is on my shirt, I guess, if you can see it. Uh, that's the name of the business, the Health Insurance Store LLC. Um, you can get a hold of me. The, the best way is email. I live on my email. Um, it's Aaron, A A R O N, at getyourbestplan.com. If you want some personal questions, some general questions, you want to submit a question for the column, that's a great way to get a hold of us. Our website is also getyourbestplan.com. That is where you'll find my columns from the Post Gazette. You can also join our, our, our Facebook page that's going to have exclusive, that has exclusive content specifically for our members. Um, and that's also titled uh, 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 Ask the Medicare uh, Specialist, which is the name of the column in the Post Gazette as well. Um, if you want to do it the old fashioned and pick up the phone and call at 724 603 3403 724. 603-3403. Any of my agents are available to help nine to five any day we're open. If you want me specifically, the best way to do is email me. I do spend, you know, a little about half the year in Florida working. I'm not retired. 
um, and half the year in Pennsylvania. So the best way to get a hold of me is is via email. And if you want to call from me, just request, hey, Aaron, can you just give me a, a quick call and, and I'll absolutely get back to you. And the uh, the store is in Pittsburgh, but you're licensed in over 20 states. Yes. And, you know, I am licensed Texas, Arizona, California, uh, Maryland, Washington, D.C., New York, Ohio, um, uh, Illinois, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, um, and, and Florida, which is a huge one. Both the Carolinas, um, you know, those are just some of the states. Tennessee, um, those are just some of the states that, that I'm licensed in. Well, I'd like to say, as we wrap this up, who who would have thunk that talking about medical insurance uh, would be so much fun? Yeah, I had fun, guys. I don't, you know, I hope I hope everybody watching had some fun and you know got a few laughs. I, I promise I won't. I don't sing or dance, so don't expect that. I'm not a very good joke teller, um, but I, I we, we, do, we do our best. You know what? The next episode is going to be Medicare, the musical. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, musical. Aaron. <laughs> you got Aaron, it. really Thank appreciate you. My pleasure, uh, guys. This is it was, ten, it was fun. 10 separate videos. You've given us a wealth of information. Uh, and what I love about it is that the videos will live forever on celebratingact2.com and people can see them for years and years. Great information, useful, important. Thanks, guys. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.